bad, but I'm delighted to say that we're looking forward now to the next game in the Premier League. I'm sure the uh, 120 minutes in the legs of the West Ham players tonight will come as a great delight to the travelling blade who joins us, Sheffield yeah. United fan, to look ahead to that game Monday night at the London Stadium, West Ham v Sheffield United. Mate, it's great to have you with us. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us and and uh, hanging on late after extra time for us. Yeah, I bet no, you're uh, bet you're absolutely buzzing with that um, few, extra few minutes in our legs tonight, aren't you? Yeah, it's um, oh, any you know any advantage we can get, we definitely need at this time. Uh, you know, we look very leggy, despite you know we've just been everyone's been running around us all season. Yet we're the ones that look leggier than the rest of the league. So any <laughs> any chance that can. Uh, tie you out a bit more no doubt we'll go the length tomorrow with Bristol City and lose on penalties so you know I'll have egg on my face then but any any advantage we can you know get from anywhere is always welcome well, absolutely. That is one small mercy from our point of view, I suppose, that A, you have got a game uh, in the FA Cup still after us and as you say, obviously not against Manchester United, Bristol City probably a little bit of a kind of game for you guys but um yes yeah, one day closer i suppose we're grabbing onto silver linings here at the moment but just looking uh forward to sort of the game on on monday night you've got 11 points now still bottom of the league burnley in 17th for a full 12 points above you with 23 chelsea at the weekend i thought you were really unlucky you had some had some big chances. Burke, when it was still nil yeah. nil, you looked you look a lot more dangerous in front of goal than you have for large parts of the season. For large games, you just didn't look like scoring for months. No, I mean a lot of this season. I mean it's still it's still not good now. But the fact that um, we're actually some we you know like I, I think back to the Southampton game away when we we lost three nil and we were. We were nowhere near it, absolutely nowhere near. It. I think we had like twenty odd percent possession that game. Um, every time we had the ball, we just lost it. And now the fact that we can actually pick, get the ball, actually look up, run forward, uh, actually string some passes together, actually have some shots, actually score a few goals now and again now, um, is, stark, is in stark contrast to the rest of the season, before Christmas at least, where it, even though it's not good now, it was absolutely abysmal then. We just couldn't... Basic football was just miles beyond us, just finding a pass over five yards to a teammate in space. We couldn't do that then. Now we do that, you know, sometimes we manage to do that, but I think the mentality has picked up. I think the cup, the cup form um, has helped us. The wins against Bristol City and Plymouth, uh, Bristol Rovers and Plymouth, sorry, have helped massively. Massive scalps, um, massive scalps. I know. <laughs> We've got to get wins from somewhere, anywhere, and it just gave us a, a bit of belief and we, you know, going on to beat Man United as well, which was uh, uh, unbelievable. I still can't believe that actually happened. But I think the mentality has sort of kicked in, but just far too late. And I think, um, you know, the quality hasn't been there. And, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have massive, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have great quality players last season, but it, uh, everything just ticked over us for, and the mentality was there. It was a really positive, can-do, fearless attitude last season. Whereas for most of this season... We will look absolutely terrified to be anywhere near that ball. Not so bad now, but too a little too late. Is there any threat over? Obviously, Chris Wilde is a, a club legend, and rightly so. Like he, he's done so much for you guys. But is there a worry that there's a slight burnout and there is cycles like we've seen with Klopp's Liverpool side? It works in cycles football weirdly. And is there a worry that Wilder might have run his course at Sheffield United? Is there any fans calling for him? What What's the opinion on him at, up at your ends right now? I think at one point there were a few like Maverick fans going like, oh, Wilder needs to go. And I, I just think that like he's a victim, as are the players, a victim of their own success. Like I think um, he came in in 2016. I think if we were still in the championship now and we were, say, top five in the championship, top six in the championship, I don't think any Chef U fans would be really complaining about Wilder saying, oh, you know, it's not good enough. I think the fact that we've just come up so quick uh, spent two seasons in the Championship, uh, performed so well in the Premier League last year. Um, I think some Sheffield fans thought, oh, it's going to carry on, you know. And I think we were a victim of our own success. And I think we sort of, I don't know, sort of like outgrew ourselves, like got, got too good for our own good. And sort of, um, I think, yeah, there is a burnout, like you mentioned. And I think, I still think, even though there is a bit of burnout, I think um, it's still sort of, we need to be, 
uh, I have, have a great sense of perspective of what players we've got. Um, and actually, it's just like now, yeah, the magic has worn off, and it's a, it's back down to reality um, with the players we have. Um, but it's sort of like glass glass half full, you know. Don't be annoyed of where we are. Still, be amazed at what happened, and then just realise that this is where we should be. You know what I mean? This is what I expected last season to be like. Really, most of this season, this is what I thought last season, and then somehow last season. We had the perfect storm that went in our favour and everything went well. We had we had very few injuries last season. And I said the mentality was there from the from the get go. Um and I think a victim of his own success. And I think like our owner Prince Abdullah said, um, I don't think anyone could do a better job this season. I don't think anyone really could have done a better job. You look at West Brom, they uh, they we we stuck with Wilder, they twisted with Billich. It's not really worked out with them. I'd say they've got worse since uh, Sam Allardyce has come in. They've conceded more goals. He's meant to shore up defences. Um, yeah, we've done a Which little is bit brilliant, better. brilliant, by the way. All of that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, um, I think we, we, when we inevitably go down into the championship, we may as well, um, I think, stick with Chris Wilder. We're only, we are where we are. You know, the reason we're in this, you know, bottom of the Premier League is because of him. Without him, we wouldn't, we, we shouldn't be anywhere near the Premier League, let alone, um, you know, at the bottom of it. And I just think, um, I can't remember what I was going to say then, but no, I think, you know, going forward in the long term, you know, I'd like to see Chris Wilder stay, well, forever, ideally. Um, but I think try and mimic or echo what Burnley did with Sean Dyche, stuck with him, went down, came back up again, strong, you know, and came back stronger. So hopefully we can do the same with Chris Wilder. And I think in a world of, uh, you look at Chelsea, um, rash decisions, I think, you know, chopping and changing, not just Chelsea, a lot of clubs now. There's no patience with managers. Um, I think it's nice just to stick with stick with someone and repay Chris for the uh, incredible job that he's done. And he's like I said, he's almost made a rod with his for his own back with uh, how brilliant yeah. he's been for us. Well, that's what Sam Sam Allardyce said. Sorry, James, I'll let you go. Sam, I just remember Sam Allardyce saying that. Wally Downs, uh, the old West Ham assistant manager, was on the podcast early this season and said the same thing about Allardyce when after he come up with us last time we were relegated. I think we came 10th the first year. And then the next season, it was pretty sort of 13th or 12th. And Wally Downs was saying it was a really good achievement uh, by Sam. And But because we came 10th that first season back, the next season, because it was not that or better, and we came 12th, all the fans were furious and thought, oh, we're going backwards, blah, blah, blah. And it almost, exactly what you're saying, victim of his success. Sorry, James, I know you're going to go then. That's cool. I, I mean, just to hear a little bit more about Ryan Brewster and, and what's happened to him at, at Sheffield United because back in the summer when Sheffield United bought him I was like cool that's a good sign and I wouldn't have minded if if we'd have signed him because we could we could have done with a, a striker and he came with a lot of pedigree from Liverpool um, and it hasn't worked out for him and a lot of West Ham fans will know that we have a bit of a knack of ending players um, goal droughts you know we're always the team that a player will end the goal drought against or score his first goal for his club against and I'm just wondering whether there's any danger of that happening this weekend or not with Brewster is he improving or is he just is he just way out of his depth I think there is a bit of that out of his depth um, I mean I, I thought it, I think it was almost like a, a bad move for him I think if he had moved to a uh, West, you know, I'd move to you. You've uh, you've had a pretty good season, a bit inconsistent at the start, but now you've hit some really good form and maybe even pushing for a top four spot. I, I definitely, I think Europa League at least. Um, so I think because you're playing, you've played much better than we have this season. Um, it have definitely, I think he's a bit of a luxury player. He needs a bit of time and space on the ball, um, and he's a bit of a look. Like I said, he's a luxury, a luxury that we can't afford. We sort of need your, your like your, your gritty strikers, sort of like the, the strikers that have come good for us this season. Are sort of your Billy Sharp, sort of you know your arson elbows out, holding the ball up, rugged, rugged, well, rugged defenders, rugged strikers, really gritty, strong strikers um, that can doing do the ugly work. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think that um, with Rian Bruce, yeah, he's had a few sparks here and there, but I think it was just for him to, for a player like that to come into a relegation threatened side and try and turn on the, you know, turn, turn the spark on. I think it was too much to ask of him. Yeah, he was at Liverpool, but didn't get too much of a run out in the first team, really. I don't know how much he played for them, probably under 23s level. And I think it's just, it, it was sort of maybe right player, wrong time for us, really. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it'd been yeah. better for him to move 
to another club such as yourselves, perhaps that have had a better season, playing better football. Whereas at times where, do you think the Premier League is too much room? Though? It, it might like be another bit, season yeah. in the Championship, I mean, maybe. He did really well for Swansea in the Championship. Um, I'm not obviously I'm not I'm not seeing how they actually played with him, but I just think that it's it's too. He gets bullied out of the game too much. He gets muscled out of the game too much. And when we had um, David Brooks, even David Brooks in the Championship, which is also you know you get you know get, get some. It's hard defenses to break down. You thought because he's a, you know he's about he's about five seven. He's very uh, you know he's lean. He's, he's quite you know he's thin. There's nothing to him. You think you know I'll get bullied off the ball, but he uses like agility and skill to get out of it. You know he thought he used what he had, so yeah, he didn't have strength, but. He used, you know, his agility to get out of situations and keep the ball despite not being strong. And I thought, oh, Brewster might be the same, but he just seems to be bullied off the ball or he'll never get to the ball first. If he does, he'll just get shouldered off it. And not really foul. He just seems to be uh, snuffed out of every single game. And it's Lightweight. he didn't seem to get any chance on the ball. Maybe if he got some of the ball, he would be able to, you know, turn a bit of the spark on and show some flair and get a couple of goals. But he's not getting much time on the it's ball just... and... Not when allowed that at the moment, been, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 just not. It's, I don't think it's the right situation for him. To be fair, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Especially at least in our situation, I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's out of depth in the prem as a whole, but it, he's not the strike you need when you're where, where we are. You know, what I mean, you need sort what of when a, you're what, and you're fighting yeah. against relegation. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, um, you know, just and we, I ask this every time we have a Sheffield United guest on. I know Tom wants to. Uh, talk to you about how you think the game's going to play out and all that sort of thing. But just from my point of view, I ask it all the time. What? Because uh, I still think of fans. You know, this strange little rivalry popped up between our two clubs back in 2007. Carlos Tevez yeah. and uh, and all that, all that carry on, despite the fact that um, I still one of the well, worst away days ever was going up to Bramwell Lane when Michael Tong whacked in a free kick and you beat us three nil, and Tevez <laughs> was nowhere to be seen. But uh, what's the from from your point of view? Like I say, I ask it all the time, and I get varied answers from Blades fans and and journalists who cover the club and all that sort of thing. What's your take on on the rivalry between between our two clubs? Is it something that you still sort of feel really strongly about, or do you not care? Because I. I've, every time we play you now, I'm desperate to win because I absolutely loved that season and loved Tevez and and I sort of got <laughs> well and truly caught up with it all. And every time we play yeah. you, I'm like, yeah, come on, I really, really want to win. <laughs> but I get the sense sometimes that <laughs> Blades fans just don't care as much as I do. I mean, it's um, I think I think um, I'm probably like the wrong Blades fan to ask for this because um, I've always been like a Chef U fan, but I only really started properly following Chef U like when we dropped into League One. Um, so right. I can't remember the, the season was that the, was it 2006 2007 when Tevez happened yeah. yeah yeah so I like I wasn't even aware that it happened like the first time I was aware of it um, was when I got um, Tevez in match attacks and I said oh dad look at that he's a good one because he's like man of the match and I said oh balls to him he flipping cheated us I was like did he <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like I knew that I shared a few fun, but I didn't really follow football much so I was like that was the first time I found out when I got Tevez man of the match so I've never had that um, uh, burning hatred for West Ham myself. I know it's been there, and I'm sure if you ask to speak to most Sheffield United fans, that are a couple of years older than myself, um, in the like 30s and that, they will be like, you know, you're to a lot of Sheffield fans, West Ham are like one peg below Wednesday in terms of how much they hate <laughs> yeah. me. I don't really see that. I sort of, when I'm at the game, I sort of get into it, but it's just because like the fans are going back and forth, so I like I really buy into it and. I remember last season when we came to your place, um, there was a few, like, I think there's a few Tevez masks knocking about outside. And um, I was in the away end on the top tier. And when you went one nil up, this bloke had a chuffing Carlos Tevez flag. He's like waving it at us, <laughs> going, you know, like Papa Gio, and everyone's flagging him off. And then when we equalised, we just sort of ran over to him, going, like, yeah, shut the fuck up, flagging him off. And that. <laughs> he was giving it big time Charlie when they scored with Tevez flag. So I buy into all that thing. And um, but like, I've never had the burning hatred of the Tevez thing. Like when I looked back, it's like, oh, that was probably really. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I wasn't really following at the time because it would have really, really pissed me off. And I'm sure if that happened now, um, the same thing happened now. I would like carry the good forever. But because yeah, I sort yeah, of came yeah. to it, came to it after. Um, I've never really had the thing. I just sort of see where someone go. Oh, yeah, that's the one that most Blade fans hate. But 
yeah, I still yeah, like yeah, it at the game just because of like a bit of banter going between the fans. And I think even when we play played you in the League Cup back in 2014, I believe. Um, I think I've seen a video on YouTube. There's like West Ham fans going like, "There's only one Carlos Tevez," and that's when there was two. There was like a league between us. So I know it meant yeah, a lot of yeah, Sheffield yeah. fans when we beat you on penalties then. But I mean, for me, it doesn't mean that too much. I love it at the game, you know, because I always just buy into the atmosphere and get carried away with it all. But I don't carry much grudge because I like, I, I didn't like witness it live, if, if you know what I mean. So, mm. but I yeah, think sure. most Sheffield fans, especially ones older than me, uh, definitely, definitely proper, have quite a strong dislike for West Ham. Yeah. yeah. Go on, Tom. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, go on. I was just going to say, you, you guys this season have struggled to, to score goals. And how do you feel like a point's not good enough anymore? With, with, with the amount of games you've got left, no. you sort of got to go out and, and win these games now. How do you feel like you're going to set up? Do you feel like you're going to come deep? Because we've often struggled against sides who tend to sit deep. But we're good defensively, so you need to show a bit of threat to have a chance at us. What do you think of the things we'll, we'll be wary of this weekend? I mean, I think we will try and attack the game as best we can. I remember one thing I noticed, I don't know if I did, it was just the angle I was at, that your pitch seemed really big. And I remember last season, even when we were playing well, uh, especially in the first half, it looked like we were like trying to walk through a tree at times, running forward. I think it's just the angle I was sat at. Um, and I just think, you know, I really, I think we're going to have to try and attack it. You know, Chris Wilder, well, he does try and go and, well, sometimes it doesn't, at this point, there's a few times this season where it's not looked like it, but, I think we do try and go and win every game, and we don't. We're not a team uh, like Newcastle, not so much now, but like a month or so back, and they just sat back every game. I don't think we will do that because there's no point. You know what I mean? There's there's honestly no point in us trying to defend. We may as well go out, you know, die fighting if you know what I mean. Um, so I think we will we'll set up as we always do: three five two, five three two. Um, we're nowhere near as good as we were last season with getting forward because we've lost Jack O'Connell. Uh, the wing backs aren't as good, so in terms of going for and then defensively, everything honest, everything's been rubbish this season, hence why we are where we are. <laughs> Every single aspect of our play has been woeful whether it's the striking, the goalkeeper, passing, name an aspect of the play, and it's been rubbish, honestly. So, <laughs> no, you feel, mate? It's, it's just everything's been absolutely shocking, hence why we are where we are. Um, I think we're gonna have to, we'll, we will, I think we will try and attack it. How much success we'll have on that, I think. If your midfield can string a few passes together, that's lights out for us because our, our midfield really struggles to get to move out of midfield and try and create an attack. Um, like I said, you've got some great talent up front, uh, some fast talent as well, which could cause us a whole world of pain. So I just think, I don't think there's any point in us trying to sit back. Um, <laughs> or attack forced, by the sounds of it. <laughs> We might be forced into it by you, but I hopefully we, I don't think we're going to try and aim to do that. But we just might be forced into it by being rubbish. But yeah, yeah. I think we'll try and attack, give it the best we've got, see what happens. Hopefully, we can yeah. pull off like another Old Trafford away. Yeah, well, that sounds you know like, like Tom said there. We do perform better against teams who come at us, but uh, obviously the effects of tonight's game um, for West Ham and uh, Wednesday nights for the Blades could have a big impact uh, on the players. But look, just before we let you go, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, just give Thanks us a quick, me. very brief uh, score prediction for Monday night's game at the London Stadium. 2-1 West Ham. 2-1 West Ham. That's not I was about to say 2-0, but I thought now we'll probably sneak a goal from somewhere. <laughs> it is nice uh, for us to speak to fans every now and then. I know it's not that enjoyable for you, but we've just got that glum, <laughs> resigned feeling that they've got to watch yeah, the team again at the weekend. Just... Well, look, that's uh, Travelling Blade there. Thanks very much for joining Cheers, us. Cheers, thanks for having you me, guys. Taking the time, especially this late at night. Oh.